This is my 2021 CF Moto 1000 Overland. Straight from the factory, this thing is a beast. But today, thanks to Main Street Cycle, I'm gonna take it to the next level. What I have in front of me is the Stage 3 Trail Clutch Kit, and I am so excited to get it installed on my Overland. This kit is super cool. It comes with a new primary spring, weights, little spacer, the stiffer secondary spring made by Vati Verico. That way you don't have to reclock your secondary and wear out that stock spring. And then lastly, for the stage three kit, we have the new Helix. And man, this thing sure is pretty. I'm excited to get this on there. Enough talking, let's go get it installed. So while I'm getting this whole thing disassembled, I'm gonna tell you guys what I have done to my 1000 Overland already. First off, I have a stage one clutch kit from Main Street Cycle. I also have the two inch lift kit made by Perfex. That thing is super good quality and pretty darn easy to install. I've got 30 inch Maxxis Carnivore tires to make the best of all that extra room I created with the lift kit. I've upgraded my air intake system. I have that carbon fiber elbow from Main Street Cycle. And then I also got the higher flowing uni air filter. Because I haven't done this a ton, I still go back and I watch the Real Talk Power Sports channel because I want to make sure I'm doing everything right. If you need more information in addition to this video, go check out Blake's channel. He's got great information on there. And then the last of my performance upgrades is the ECU tune from Main Street Cycle. I could absolutely feel the at least 10% horsepower gain I got from the ECU tune. And I think that ECU tune paired with this stage three clutch kit is gonna be absolutely amazing. So first thing we have to do is uh, get it to clamp down a little bit farther a little bit tighter so we can release the uh, snap ring. That's what it's called. I got this set of snap ring pliers from Amazon. So you just use your snap ring pliers, get them in there. A little difficult being a one man show here sometimes. Let's release, snap ring. There we go. Hopefully it'll just come straight up sometimes. It doesn't want to move, yep. It's kind of stuck down there. So I'm gonna release that a little bit and then just tap it. There we go. My all thread is too short. Um, that's what I get for buying the cheaper tool on Amazon. So I'm gonna hold this while I release the nut. That way everything doesn't just come flying apart. At the top end, there's not gonna be a ton of um, force on here anymore, so it'll be all right. I also don't wanna lose my nut there. Well, lost the nut anyway. So with this spring, I'm like an inch short. I was able to compress it and put it on there. With that new spring, I don't know, man. I'm gonna take these apart and make sure I get all this nice and cleaned up because these are pretty dirty. So I'm just spraying it down with brake cleaner, scrubbing it with a scotch Bright pad, and then cleaning it up with a microfiber towel. I went over it maybe five or six times until I was happy with the way it looked. Well, it might not be perfect, but it is a whole lot better than it was. Now I just gotta do it to the rest of them. Shout out to Blake for the Real Talk Power Sports shirt. You guys can get these at MainStreetCycle.com, pretty sweet. All right, I got them all cleaned up, along with the one on the four-wheeler that's still in there. And this is the belt I just pulled off. So this is an Ultimax. Um, you can see this was the outside edge, and it is just completely torn up. Um, honestly, not really sure what I did wrong. So the more I thought about this, I realized it was probably those 750 plus really, really hard miles I put on it in Arizona on the Arizona Peace Trail. I was pretty hard on my machine, especially pulling that five to 600 pound trailer. So I think that's what probably did the belt in. We'll see how much better the OEM belt does. So we'll get these put back together and then get the new Helix and spring installed. We're gonna throw it into B1, the stock location. 
And then this new beautiful helix, look at the difference. Oh yeah, that thing is pretty. All right, so now the tough part that I was worried about. So gotta clock this to one. So we're at B1, just like stock. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to muscle this down. Luckily, my buddy Elias is here, so he might be able to come help me. Ah. All right, guys, I got some help. So I think with this short tool, this is a two-man job. I don't know if I'm heavy enough. <laughs> we can do it with both of us. Yeah, that's good. Got it. Sweet. As long as this is somewhat straight. Yeah, we're good. Cool, cool thanks. So if you don't have the right tool, you at least need a buddy. <laughs> So that's close. So that's the keyway in the helix. And then I need to line it up with the keyway in the sheave itself. So if you guys can tell, it's just a little off there. Hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. So you can see that little gap down there. That's what I need to get lined up. So I'm just gonna twist it until the key drops down. Right there, so the key dropped down. Now the helix is connected to the lower sheave. This needs to go down on that side because you basically want to add tension to the spring, not take it away. So again, this is connected to the bottom sheave. So all you have to do is, is push the sheaves in different directions. Oh, it's pretty tight. I noticed Blake was using some rags. That would probably be a good idea, but I'm almost there. Oh no, I just undid it. All right, there we go. So now you can just pinch them together, make sure they stay, of course. Now I just gotta get this down tight enough to be able to get my snap ring back on there. So I got the snap ring here. Oh, you guys, I think I can finagle it around the don't forget to put your snap ring on. Okay, I finagled it around the all thread. Not, not really the right way to do that. Okay, we are all installed. So now all I have to do is release the pressure here That's it, good to go. Man, look at that, you guys. That helix sure is pretty. The helix is also made by Vati Verico, not just the secondary spring. All right, now we gotta get the new weights put in for the primary here. Before I put the new weights in, I'm gonna go clean these off in the sink real quick. All right, I got everything cleaned up, mostly cleaned up, cleaned up enough for me. Gonna install the new weights. All right, weights are installed. Oh shoot, I always forget which way they go. All right, let's pause the video right there and show you guys the correct way to install these weights. I meant to double check before I moved on with the video, but I totally spaced it. So when you're reinstalling the weights, Make sure you install them like that, not the way I had them. All right, let's go get it all reinstalled. All right, so this washer came with the new spring and it's gonna go up inside there. Then we'll put the washer and spacer back on in the same order they were on that new primary spring. There we go. A couple drips. Again, we'll throw a little Loctite on here. And again, this side is just normal thread. 
Give this a couple ugga duggas. Should be good to go. Switch out for that 32 mil. Remember, it's a left hand. And lastly, we have that left hand threaded bolt. Again, a little bit of thread locker. Gotta get through that initial set of threads. Maybe. Oh my gosh, I just told you guys it's left hand thread. And I'm trying to screw it in like normal. Okay. Left hand thread. A little foreshadowing here. There's something wrong inside, has nothing to do with the clutch kit. You'll see in a little bit what is going on, but don't worry before the end of the video, everything is gonna be working perfectly. Everything looks pretty good. I'm gonna take it out for a quick little test ride and see how it does. everything's good to go, let's get that cover back on. With the clutch kit fully installed, there's only one thing left to do, take it out on the trail and test it out. Well, it looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day for off-roading, let's get to it. Clutch kit is definitely making a big difference. The takeoff when I ease onto the throttle is so much smoother. I can definitely feel that power more immediately on the low end. It just engages quicker, spins those tires, and moves me up the steep hills and over the rocks, no problem. But something is about to go terribly wrong. And again, I didn't know it at the time, but it has nothing to do with the clutch kit. So I stopped my four-wheeler to get some video and I noticed it was making kind of some extra noise, some real metallic-y sounds out of the clutch area. Something's definitely off right now. Um, I'm trying to run it low because we're in the snow and stuff and uh, it's immediately spiking the RPMs to the point where I can't go past like 12 to 15 miles an hour. So there's definitely something going on in there. Uh, I'll check it when we get back. But for now, I mean, it's running just fine. Otherwise we're almost to that cabin. So we're gonna press on and hopefully everything turns out fine. made it to the cabin. Something weird is definitely going on with my clutch. I'm not really sure. We're just gonna have to get it back to the shop, take it apart and see what's going on. We got back to the truck, no problems, no issues but I do have some thoughts about what's going on. The clutch is engaging really, really quickly. Um, it's almost making high like a low gear and then low like a really, really low gear. So I'm thinking that I either... Yeah, I'm just gonna cut myself off there. I was wrong. I blew up the one-way bearing, which isn't actually a one-way bearing on the 1000. But I wanna be clear, this was not caused by the clutch kit. It was caused by me overheating the clutch last year. You can watch my previous video if you wanna see what happened. Basically the bearing was on its way out and it was time to be replaced anyway. 
But yeah, uh, there's my problem. So it's been a few months. Life just got super busy. Here we are now already in June and this poor four wheeler has been sitting here the whole time. Let's get it fixed. This is the issue, my bearing, uh, one-way bearing in other four wheelers, not a one-way bearing in the 1000, but my bearing was shot. I had burned it up previously. I tried to repack it with grease. I probably didn't do a good enough job, so that was just shattered. Main Street Cycle came in absolutely clutch and sent me these upgraded bearings. They sent them out within like a week, and that was like five or six months ago. So this delay, 100% on me, but in that time, I actually got to go down to Georgia and visit Main Street Cycle. So stay tuned, because I'm gonna make a whole video on my visit down there to Main Street Cycle, getting to meet Blake and Joel and all the other great people down there. I got the old blown apart bearings or the, what was left of them out. Now time to put the new pretty ones in. Now that's what it's supposed to look like. Got it all put back together. I'm sure you guys didn't want to see that again. I'm gonna get it fired up and see how it runs. Well, everything seems to be working perfectly just as it's supposed to now that I got those new bearings. So now we're gonna head back out to the mountains. Unfortunately, all the snow's gone. I love riding in the snow and really Put this clutch kit to the test. I already know it's awesome because it was working great for about half the ride. We're back up in the mountains. It's gonna be attempt number two to see how this stage three clutch kit performs. As expected on the second go around, this clutch kit did not disappoint. If anything, it performed even better than my first test. Replacing that worn out and eventually blown up bearing really let me use this clutch kit to the full potential. I can say with no bias at all, I absolutely recommend this stage three trail clutch kit. If you don't think that's exactly what you're looking for, MSC can put together a clutch kit specific to your needs. In my next video, we're gonna be showing the custom clutch kit that MSC put together for my brother's 2017 500S. Again, a big shout out to Blake with Real Talk Power Sports and to Main Street Cycle for getting me this stage three trail clutch kit. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.